Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video, and this one is on inking. Now, I know I have not done a lot of videos on inking, but nonetheless, it is part of putting your comic books together. So, let's go to the table, and I'll show you what I know about inking. Let's go. All right, now, let's get into inking. First of all, what is inking? Inking is basically, basically, now, I don't want to offend uh, 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 any inkers. It's just basically taking a drawing, a pencil drawing of some particular type, and then covering it with ink, just going over it with ink. That's your basis, you know, because you can take this, and uh, if an inker can take this and just turn it into a work of art, just a plain drawing like this, and add the shadows and so forth. So it's a little more to it, but basically, you're just taking that and you're going over it with ink to have it one one solid piece basically one solid line not a lot of scratches and scribbles and so forth so that's basically what inking is now let's talk about the tools you can use for inking now let's go old school first the brush the brush now it takes mad skills to be able to use a brush i've tried it uh years ago but i could never really master it i my, my master was drawing not inking so the only thing about a brush is it's really messy. You have to continue to dip it. You have to buy the ink. You have to dip it. You have to kind of like wipe the excess off. Till you get that, that fine point and then go over it. So, I mean, if you, if you choose to do brushes, and for those, those who can do brushes, thumbs up to you. Um, well, let's get these out the way. Ink pens. I, I, know, I knew a guy that did ink pens. You can do this with an ink pen, but an ink pen is not going to be... It's not going to have a smooth line as a brush or a marker, but it can be done. As I said, I've, I've seen them. But the problem is with ink pens are, all ink pens are not alike. Now, for me, I mean, if you have to go that way, if you can't really afford any markers or something, I would say this Pilot G2, to me, that would be the best ink pen to do it because it's smooth. And this, you know, any any other one, any big, any whatever, it's just, it's just to me, it's not as good because the line comes off not as smooth as the other one so if you have to go that way go that way but the thing is about inking with an ink pen if you have a large surface that you have to ink you're going to get like white lines in there in there because it's hard and then you can also smear it i, I didn't show it. that was off camera i'm sorry go again if you have a large area that you have to do shadow in your ink is going to be wet and you can actually smear it. So if you're going across something and you do that, you can actually smear it. So that's the bad thing about ink pens. So there's the dip pen. Now this particular one has a little cartridge that you have the ink inside and it continues to flow. But a lot of these will not flow right. You can get the old school where you dip it in the ink, but you, again, again, you have to wipe it off until you get your... your um, the ink flowing till you get that amount you want to flow and this like pens you only get like one line you don't you can't get any line weight from this like you could a brush and two uh it's messy because when you're using this kind of ink it stays wet it might stay wet for like five six eight minutes you know with your lines so you have you have to ink like one part over here then you have to go to the other side and you have to ink that because this is going to be wet for a while so you cannot cannot touch that but this is they're expensive and they're messy and i said this one was cheaper i don't know if it's cheaper than the other one, but as i said it has the, the the cartridge inside i don't know if this one has one but yeah it has the ink cartridge inside but the ink it, it's hard to flow once you get it flowing it's good but for some reason they don't flow well all the time so i mean that's that's another option though that you can try but as I say, you can't really get any line weight with this. It's basically just all one straight line, like the ink pen. Um, Sharpie, <clears throat> I've seen people do with Sharpie. The problem is with a Sharpie is after a while, that the, the black kind of turns like to a greenish color, and then it will actually go through some papers. So that's not good for Sharpie. And it's just, it's the, the line goes on, it bleeds, let's say it grows. Like if I do a, a thin line, as it's drying, that line will like really actually expand a little bit. So it, yeah, if you're doing like small, small detail, that line kind of pops up and expands. So Sharpie, maybe on a 
background. But as I said, Sharpie will not really stay black, black. It'll fade kind of, and then later on, once it, it maybe a month or so, it'll it'll have a greenish kind of tint to it. I trust me, I've done it before. So which leads us to our more popular markers. These are like kind of felt tip brush uh, art brush, not brush markers, but markers. So we have um, the Statler, the uh, Micron, and the Faber Castell, which you know all three I've used over and over again. If you ask me. I will go with the Faber, Faber Castell one because I think it's the cheapest of the two. You can find cheaper ones like this was Artist Loft right here. I think these are really, really, really cheap. Not, let's not say cheap, let's say inexpensive. But to me, you don't get as much ink as you will out of one of these. And the ink, um, I'm not going to say it doesn't flow as good. It just doesn't feel as good as these. But I mean, if you're on a budget, you can do these and the, the good thing about these type of pens are you can buy them in sets like this with different type points to it now as i say my my favorite is the, the, the fabric castell so they all do the same just let me get this out the, let me get these out the way so the good thing about these is you know you have your different uh tips you have your different size tips on them you have uh your what is this this is a this is small, this is extra small, and then you e they even have brushes. Now, the Microns have brushes as well, brush tips. If you've never seen it, the brush tip. But the Micron brush tip, as I say, it's a felt kind of material, and the Micron brush tip will not hold a point as long as the Fabric Estelle. I think this is an old one, and this is a new one. When you first get them, they have a nice point. And if you can see that this point is like kind of wearing out right here compared to this one. So after a while, you will get, you will lose that point, especially if you're bearing down hard. Now, this is the one that's kind of wearing out. You can see the tip, the difference between the two tips. But the good thing about it is you can go from a thin line to a thick line see that goes way it went way up but you can go from a thin line to a thick line easily mimicking the old school brush style so that's 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 a good thing about this but as i say these would be my favorites here these would be my favorites so let me stop rambling but depending on the budget you have if you have to just use an ink pen go with that one the pilot g2 to me is the best one now, if not, go on a budget and go ahead and, you know, get the artist loft some just, there are a bunch of different ones, but the inks are kind of different. All right. Okay. So the first thing you have to do before you start inking is there are four things that you have to think about. Number one is what is your source? What is that light source? Where is that light? What is the light? What's making that light? Is it the sun? Is it a fluorescent bulbs above the guy? Is it like a little lamp? sitting next to the guy's bed you have to figure that out and that determines how much light that is hitting the subject number two you have to you have to ask yourself or you have to know where that light is coming from now is it like they say the sun from above is it the ceiling light from above is it is, is it uh, um the lamp from this side is there some floor lights coming up from him so you have to figure out that direction that that light is coming and hitting that subject Number three is the intensity of that light. Is it, is he in um, a hotel room? It's like you do like a murder mystery and he's in a hotel room and it's only like one uh, dim light above him. So giving this guy a lot of shadow or is he in the desert, which is just bright, bright, you know, intense light com coming at him. So you have to figure out the intensity because that will determine how much shadow you're seeing from this guy or that's going to be on your subject. And then the third thing and the most important are your surface planes. Now, surface planes meaning how is something shaped? Is it, is it round? Is it flat? Is it, is it like a, a pointed or whatever? So light will affect, let's see, light will affect everything depending on its shape. So you have your square, your cylinder, and your circles. So we have those three things. So let's say... Um, now these, these are your surface, these are your surface planes right here. This is round, this is round, and this is flat on all sides. So you have 
your light source, which is coming this, which is here. Okay, let's just say it's a, it's a, it's a lamp, some kind of it's a light bulb right here. Now it's here and it's coming from this direction here. Now let's just even do more. So it's coming from here, this guy, and then here to this right there. So now you know automatically, let's ink this, Brian, since we're doing inking, you know automatically light, what's, what's on the closest to the light is going to be brighter and what's furthest is going to be darker. So, you're starting out, you have your drawing already, so now you're putting ink to it. So, you basically, you're going to do just the basic lines. These are your basic lines you would do even in a drawing. You just follow the contours of the lines that the artist has or that you have if you're the artist. And then, that's your basic for inking, your base, basic basis for inking here. Like that. Now you might say, oh, that's a good drawing, but you know, an inker can see that and make that a whole lot better, a whole lot better. So now that we have our planes, we have our light source, we have the intensity, let's just say it's going to be fairly bright, fairly bright. So you, now you have your plane. Now let me give you my pencil. So because the light is hitting here, you're going to get more light on top. You're going to get probably less light here and maybe dark, darkest right there. Let me pull out a brush to do that. So let's just say, because this is the furthest point here. This is the bad brush. This is the furthest point right here. So that's going to be the darkest here. And it's going to fade into a brighter or, or a less dark because the light is here and it's kind of going down here. So let's just do this. Where's my thin pencil like here? Like that. So this one might be because the light is here and going down here. This one might be less darker than this. We can do this. And then because this is getting all the light, you can actually do something like this, like that. That tells you a different plane that we would make this, you could probably make this a little smoother by either feathering it or catching it. Or not smoother. Um, what's the word I'm trying to find? Transition is what I'm trying to say. You're gonna transition from light to dark a little more smoother than just have uh, black and white. And you do that by uh, either you're going to cross hatch or you're going to feather. And we're going to get into that. You're going to have a solid black. You're going to do cross hatching or feathering. So we're going to get into that in a second. So now this is the light is coming this way. So this would probably be um, the shape would go this way. But just for the sake and to make it easy, let's just say the light source is coming this way. So this is round. So this back is going to be black. And I'm just doing this to get into some feathering. So this is going to be black, followed by uh, light. Now to transition it again, you can do your feathering, which is just you're bringing lines into it, bringing lines out of it. Kind of like that, and that way it won't look so um, hard. The, that line, that black line, won't look so hard. It will actually transition into a shadow, and it all depends on the intensity of the light because you can have it short like that, or you can have it way out like this. So what that was saying, what that would say, the longer your feathering lines would be, would mean the harder the light is. That light is so hard or so bright that it's going, it's starting way out here and then pulling, going back, if that makes any sense. Also, when you pull your lines, that means your light is getting closer and it actually, it would be 
coming from around this way here because your light's going to come around here. It's going to be bright right in front of this area where you can't see it. And then the shadow starts to taper off right in here. Now, as for the ball, and then we'll keep the light coming down. So because the ball is round, that surface is round or that, that, um, that surface is round. I'm looking for my pencil. So that shadow is going to be probably like this round, like a half moon kind of. Use my brush. That plane, that was the word I was looking for, the plane. And again, you can either leave it like that with a hard light or you can feather it to make that light smoother. Now, the one thing when you do, when, you, when you're looking at the planes of your surface is you have to know the shapes of it. And I'll get into that with this. So this is round. So this is going to be round like this like this you're going to have to it's going to have to follow that contour those 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 featherings are going to have to follow the contour of that so because the sun is, is or the sun the light is brighter here and i could have dropped that down more like this i'm going to do this i'm going to continue with that roundness but i'm not going to take it all the way up so you see that line so i'm going to do my feathering like this keeping it round like that now if I wanted to do more hatching I could actually bring some more round lines but this is a really small small um, example so it's probably hard for you guys to see but you have to know your shape with the contour of whatever and then that's why I have this so you so when you're when you're doing a person or a table or a, a lamp or a chair whatever you have to know the contour of that shape so your muscles are going to go like this round like this same thing with this this is round and this is one of the most important things about um drawing so let me let me actually go ahead and do detail on this. This is going to go in and out like this. So this one's going to go in and out because these are two separate pieces. You have like a round piece like this and another round piece like that sitting on top. So it's going to come around, go in like that. And you will get your shadow down in the areas that are going in. So this same thing out here, this muscle is going to be like this. But initially, it's going to be like the cylinder. So if you're new to starting out in the very beginning, and this is why I say do a lot of do a lot of examples of drawings, just do a lot of um, rough drawings. Number one, where's my light coming from? Let's say my light is coming from above. Let's just say right here, coming this this way. So if you have a light source, let's just say my light source is right here and it's in a lamp it's just like it's, it's a lamp right here that light is going to come out here 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 so it's going to change directions it's going to be one lit area but the light waves let's just say that is going to change directions to hit and cause different types of shadow shapes on your contoured line I mean, if you, I don't want to say you're going to get light that just falls like this. You can probably, but if it's in a room or something, if, if it's from a particular source or bulb or something, not just everywhere, then it's going to kind of fall out like that all around to give you a different shape on your body or whatever structure it is on. So if my light was, if we're coming down like this, so because this is a, this is kind of a circle, Light's coming down like this, so this is going to have this shape here, the circular shape, because this is tucking under. All this is going to be shadow, and it's good to do it with a pencil or pen before you get started. Same thing here. Now, this is like this, so let's just say hard, hard shadow here. It's just like this. It's just like this. It's going to go in here. Again, light is coming down, so it's going to be... This is going to cast a little shadow here because this is hovering over top of that. So you have a little shadow here. 
This is uh, inside, so that could be black. Uh, you're going to have some dim shadow here coming up, some shadow there. Uh, this is the same thing that's going to go in because this, this goes around, in, out, and then back out. So you have this little piece here like that. So it's going to come in like that. So same thing, you're still going to have some shadow. And it depends on the intensity of the light, but I'm just going to just throw shadow in here just because. So down here, so because this is round, you're going to have shadow here. And I'll just put a little bit up there. And it can cast some shadow down here. So this is going to be shadowed here. And when I see this, I see my basic shape. This is my basic cylinder shape. And this is kind of like the basic ball shape. And then later on, I'll, I might add some, some secondary lighting to it. No, not really secondary lighting, just some add some extra shadows to it. So if I had, let's just do the chest just because, just because you do the chest. And the chest is, if I did a side view of the chest, the chest comes out like this. And then comes down to the stomach like that. So that's the chest and it comes to the shoulder or to the delt. So all of this under here is going to be black. Or we'll have that shadow, it's going to be cast shadow here. And then, of course, shadow in the abs. So, number one, you're going to have shadow underneath of it. And then this is going to be dark down here, too. And I used, I used a pen. But one thing is, like, you have that, you have, like, a rim light, shall we say. Uh, you don't want to have, like, shadow on shadow a lot of times. So you leave a little space between the two shadows to show that, the line ends right there. So let me do this real quick. So doing this is round here, here, some shadow here. So let me leave that light, the indication of where that line is. So let's just put this, let's curve that around here. That's, this is going to be black, as I said. So I'm not going to take this shadow all the way to that. I'm going to have shadow here. Shadow that comes out here, here, stopping there, let's just say here, and these little striations here, and just do the second one here, and then let's say the hand is black as well. Do my good brush, so I'm gonna come down, and this is really sloppy because I'm trying to rush because I don't want this to be an hour video. I'm just, it's, it's for you to practice. I just wanna give you a little bit of knowledge so I said you have that little line right here to separate where the shadow and the uh, arm is here. A little separation here and here. And you don't have to separate every piece of shadow. It can depending on the light intensity, and that's that's in that's that your tricep, the dip in your tricep. So here. And then under here. So you're going to have to know the cuts of your muscles. That's one thing that I tell people. If you're not sure how the muscle is actually shaped, don't do. Try not to put, you know, every little cut, every little detail. Just have the nice shaped, round, the round shaped body. And that will suffice until you learn how to do muscles. Because once you do, if I put my arm out straight and I twist it, that turns, it's different. It's, it's a whole different muscle. And if, I, if I flex it, it's, again, these muscles change. So don't, don't think, oh, the muscle goes like this, it goes like that. When you turn it around, it's a totally opposite picture. So that's my hardcore shadow right there. Now, if I wanted to not make that so hard, I wanted to kind of like, um, and I keep losing that word, it'll be down here. To bring it out, then I will do my feathering. But again, because these surfaces are round, you have to feather in that direction. So I'm using this pencil again, let's just say I'm going to bring this up right here. And this is going to be weird, but you'll, you'll understand it because it, it's it goes. Well, let's go the opposite way because that was looking a little weird.
And again, as I did this, I'll do this line because I, you don't want to have something that's round and in a straight shadow like this. Like here's my feathering. And I used to do that when I was young because I didn't really understand the, the, the surface of this thing because it's round. It's not going to be feathered like that or it's not going to be shaded like that. It's going to be, it's going to have that, that dip like that. So it's going to end where that curved line ends to make that look round and not flat. Like if I'm a, if, if this is my shadow here, I'm not going to shade it like this. That's not going to be because it, it doesn't work. It makes it look flat versus round. So you, it has to fall on that same curved line like this. Like that, to give it that roundness. Now if you want to add extra, if it's not, there's that word again, enough, then you can go with cross, hat, cross hatching. God, I'm losing it all. Same thing here. Now you don't have to go all the way across. It can just go down. Same thing. Let's just say here. You know the the with the darker where the darkest part of the shadow is the darkest part or the deepest part of the shadow is that's the highest point where you want to do feathering. So let's just say here. I want to do something like this. What is this? This is the S. And do something like this. And then as I come out, I'll I'll bring it down closer to the shadow. I won't have it all up so high going like from here and they all stay the same height all the way across unless it's just one shadow. Let's just say if this thing here was all shadow then I may do that just to show that it's just one solid shadow but not completely black. So same thing here, let's just say I'll do here, and I'll bring it in, um, let's just say here going around, and then if I want to bring it up, I'll do something like that. But I would say on, on any kind of shadowing, if you're not, I don't want to say professional, if you're not used to it. Don't try to do every piece of shadow like that because it, it looks, it looks, it's too busy one. It's just too busy. Like the box, I mean, that would, that would be enough shadow. But if I said, oh, let me, let me do this here. And then let me put a little bit more over here, just a little bit over here. You know, it gets to the point where you, you overkill it. So sometimes it's just good to just do just a little shadow like this and then maybe a couple lines just to show, you know, that, that the crease or that, that indentation goes, continues to go. But as I say, it all depends on how much light you have in your room or your area or wherever you know that that's all the shadow you need in your average drawing all right let's take the chest since i'm staring at the chest this is this is the shadow called from the chest being out now with something like this now because i don't want shadow touching shadow i will do something like this and then kind of fade it out or fade it in. Like that. And you have plenty of shadow. Leaving that line there, you can probably bring it in a little closer. Knowing that that's the end of the end of your line for your chest. Why am I losing it? I'm just playing around here. All right, let's look at this and do a little hatching around here. Let's just say I just want to shadow around both edges. I would do something like this since this is the darkest part. Maybe like that. And then coming around here. 
Now you can also pull your lines closer together. Let's just for an example. Here are, this is the darker area here. So I have the lines close together. And as it gets to be lighter, you space your lines out a little bit more, a lot more. And then you can go from, uh, from a, a semi-shadow to black. And if you choose to do cross-hatching, it would be the same thing. You don't have to cross-hatch the whole thing. Let's just say I'll do something like, like this, leaving space, and then going closer as I get to this, and then come back out as I go further. That's just an example of cross-hatching, is just going across your lines over and over if you want to do like a mesh but the closer your lines are the darker it would be and i've seen people just do just keep going and they come up with some beautiful you know um line work because they kind of practice that now as far as inking i think my weakest of doing all would be uh perspective and then followed by inking and that's only because I don't do enough of it you know I'll do your basic inking like this you know add a little little different types of shadow to my drawing but I don't go into it and say oh uh, I'll try some fancy something that looks like this and add this and add that because the one thing about inking is it's permanent I can do whatever I want with a pencil and say oh I don't like that and I erase it but when you ink something that's it. So I think that's the fear that I have for inking. So I could say, you know, I, I try not to. I, I'm not a great inker because I don't do it because of the fear of it. But you have to, because if you're doing a book yourself, then you're going to have to be able to do everything. Draw, write, do perspective on it, all that stuff. You're going to have to start doing on your own book. So it's best to just. As, and I say in a number of uh, other videos, just get you some cheap paper and just draw something. Just just draw anything. Just just keep drawing. Just stuff one to build up your your skill, and you know just get that practice in of drawing constantly. And then after you draw it, figure out where your light's coming from, how intense your light is, what 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 light source is going to be. And then just put some shadows in there with your pencil. And then just practice, practice inking it. And then try a couple things and see what happens. You can do the cross hatching type or you can do the, the feathering just just practice just remember your surface is if it's flat or if it's round or whatever it is you have to keep that line going in that direction so like that would be hatching going into from this line here to go into that line here which would make a good nice little effect And just practice. That's it. Just practice. That's all art is. Is practicing. Same way if you're going to play the piano or ride a bike. It's all practice. How much time do you want to put into it? How much do you love that thing that you're doing so that you can say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. But if, if something that you love, then you'll be just you do it as much as possible. So that you can be better. For some reason, it's hard for me to talk and ink at the same time. But just as much as you can, as much practice as you can, as much time as you can, draw and then figure out, you know, if it's a dark shadow, how, how you know, where would the, where would the um, shadows fall if it was dark, if it was light shadow? Light shadow, did you just say light shadow? 
I believe I did say light shadow. Contours of the face. You have that under the eye. You have the under the nose, under the chin. You have that there. You have this here. This dark is it's darkest right here, and then it it, it kind of like lightens up right there. And again, where's the light coming from? It's just practice, as I said, right now I can say that a million times. It's just practice. So I think that might be it on inking. I mean, there's a lot to it, but there's not a lot to it. Just remember your four things. Uh, what is your light source? Is it the sun? Is, the, is it a lamp? Is it, is it a campfire? What source is it? Where is it coming from? If it's a campfire, it's going to be on the ground, so the light is going to be hitting, and the shadow is going to be over top. Uh, if it's a, a spotlight in the back, you, you, most of your light is going to be, you're going to have a rim, definitely have a rim light. Let's just say this, if the spotlight, if this is your arm here, your shadow and a light is coming from the back. Here's a light back here. Like, you know, the police are coming in front of the light or it's Batman. All this is going to be black inside and outside is going to be white. You won't see any detail on the inside, it's gonna be like that. And the outside is gonna be like that, leaving that little rim light. So yeah, where's that light source coming from? Um, what angle, as I said, what, what angle, that's where is it coming from? It's angle, the intensity of it, how bright is it? If it's a small campfire, if it's a raging campfire, um, and your surface planes, and which is the most important. You just have to remember everything is pretty much round on the character. This is basically just cylinders, and this is why I get people to, to draw cylinders and squares and so forth. Well, it's gonna be all like that, Brian. It's just not go crazy about it. And the same thing here, but it's gonna be round. So how's that shadow hitting a round object? Same way with the ball. If the light came from here, if the light was here, the ball was here and the light was here, it's going to be dark back here. If you have a double light, then you would have that. Is it is it a rim light? You have a light here that's intense and a light here that's intense, or not a light that's that's not so intense. It would be here and then it'll be like here, but it'll it'll fade out because that's not the intense part right there. I might have a little bit here. Or if it's on a floor or here's a wall and here's the ball, the light would hit here and hit the back of the light and bounce off and you'll have that, that extra light back here, that light back here for that ball. Let me ink that. See, now I'm going into a whole new world here. And let's say the light is here. And it would be just like this. It would be just a little piece of light reflecting from that wall ever is a reflect is it a reflective light uh, yeah yeah and this one here and you can have your fade out with your hatching like so but yeah I'm, I'll, I'll go into the whole thing again but surface how's your surface how's that plane chest is going to come in and out so you're going to have some shadow down here not always dark dark shadow like that shadow down here shadow underneath and the arm is blocking that so you have shadow down here definitely shadow under here your stomach is sucked in sucked in here and sucked in there down around the crotch you'd have shadow down here between the thighs, shadow down here. You have your muscle here, so usually I'll put shadow right here. You have these lines that come up. They come up like this. Once you get your cylinder shape, you know your cylinder shape, then you know that, let me do this other muscle. It comes here, this other one comes here, and it separates here. So it's gonna be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and like that. So of course you're gonna have a little bit of shadow just between those muscles, but you don't have to make it black shadow. 
usually I will just do something like this to show that that shape comes down, keeping it round. Same thing here. Just a few lines to show that that shape comes in. The knee, the knee, you're gonna have shadow under here. And then there's some crease under there, which I just showed you, depending on how much light you want to put under it there. And then again, those striation lines that separate. And then, of course, you're going to have to do your um, line weight. So anywhere it curves or the highest point of the curve, you bring it out more. And the highest point of the curve, well, that's black, so you wouldn't see that. Highest point of the curve, you... Give it, make it thicker, come to thin. Highest point of the curve is like right here. And then that's where you get your added muscle from when you're doing your line weight. Back here, highest point here. If that's not all black, bring that in. There. Um, even out here, don't be careful on the, um, you don't want to give them a fat waist. The hand, any part that's the highest point of the curve. What would be the highest point of the curve of the ball, Brian? I guess with the lightest, the light. You can also have uh, your light, if your light is really intense, then you can have this thick here, and it thins out, and it breaks. Because that light is so intense, it, it actually breaks your line. But this has to be thick for that to break and be really thin like that. So if your shadow was here or your light was here, you could have this broken, this line broken the same way you have it here. So again, I want to leave you on that one. I don't want to go too crazy on the shadow. Just remember those four points and you have to know your contours. Keep your hatching going in the direction of your contours. And then you should be all right. So if there's anything that I missed, I'll cover that in another video. But I just want to get you guys going on on uh, say on um, inking because once you have your character, once you have the design, once you have it drawn, you want to make it look inked. You want to ink it to make it look cool, and then you want to color it. But I don't know if I get into color. That's a whole different story. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, give me a thumbs up. And if you're old to the channel, tell somebody else to give me a thumbs up. So, yeah. And leave a comment. Leave a comment. Always like to hear comments. If there's anything you're having trouble with, let me know and I'll try to help you with it. I do help people online. They just, you know, email me and then here's my email address. And then show me their work and I critique it or I, I redraw it and show them what they need to improve at and so forth and so on. So, that's going to be it. No more rambling. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Stay safe. Class is over. Dismissed.